Yo, what up, what up? What up, what up? Man, oh man. We are live. What up, world? It's your boy C's from the CsLife.com. Welcome back to the people's favorite channel on the internet. Today we are going to be covering the Tory Lane's verdict. We had some audio issues to start, but we're back on track. So Tory Lanez was found guilty on all three charges this afternoon in Los Angeles, California. And man, like, what a shocker. I'm not going to lie, like, this verdict took me by surprise. Not only me, but several other people by surprise. And <laughs> this is a major L for the for black men in America this is a major L for the justice system this is a big L for Tory Lanez for Megan Thee Stallion Rock Nation all parties that are involved man this was a vicious miscarriage of justice man wow like <laughs> now I've been following this case for the past two weeks and I've been following it from the eyes of um, uh, Kathy Ta. No, no, not Kathy Ta. Uh, um, they call it her Megan, the reporter, Milagro, DJ Academics, uh, Lawyers for Workers, uh, Mr. Dennis, several other uh several individuals right and and so many different other blogs that was just reporting it and everyone shocked at this verdict you know there are people rejoicing but you don't see too many people coming out of the woodworks and saying like yo this is a dub this is this is a win it is wild man like what came out of this <laughs> so first and foremost, um, we're gonna like we're going to give you my mindset from the person that I've been following the most, which is Lawyers for Workers. He was actually one of the not he he's a lawyer from New York. He represent workers, and um, he uh, he. Let me see if I can pull this page up. He was taken aback from the verdict as well. Like, he was taken aback from the verdict. So, we're going to let him talk. Um, <laughs> so, I'm going to pull him up on the screen and have him give his account. All right. So, this is the, this is like, this is how I'm feeling, right? From like, yeah, so let's let him, this is how I'm feeling. If you watch that trial, you can talk to me about that trial. Certainly if you're a defense attorney, I can talk to you about that trial. I'll tell you this about that trial. When I heard Kelly's testimony from the defense attorney about the fight between two women that went on for several minutes, that the big guy had to break up, that the one woman went back to the car, that he saw a flash, he saw what looked like the woman shooting into the car, fireworks into the car. <laughs> When I heard all that, to me, reasonable doubt was there. That was the pivotal, seminal moment in the courtroom. Then the prosecutor went out there, and the prosecutor and got him to say, or I don't know if the prosecutor said it, but it was the little man shot four or five times, and he was shooting with his arms outstretched like this. And, and everybody was kind of like, wait, what? And you couldn't put the two together. And in my head, I can really put it together, and it was so the defense attorney sort of put it together but the way it came out to the jury the way it came out on the transcript i don't think the jury is able to rectify or see a sequence of events where the shooting starts with the woman and puts something other than an intent on the part of the man to take out and shoot against a woman and i think that's what this trial came down to prayers to tory's family um i saw reasonable doubt in that trial the jury, did they get it right? Did they get it wrong? They reached a verdict, and that's what verdicts are. It's really not about right or wrong. Yo, man. Like, that was a fast one that 
the prosecutors pulled. Now, Tory Lane's father, who was very colorful coming out of the courtroom today, he mentioned that the defense called Sean Kelly to the case as their witness. And when Sean Kelly came to the court, spoke to the prosecutors, when he came back, he refused to shake Tory Lane's lawyer's hand and then proceeded to shake the hand of the prosecutors. Coincidence? I'll let you be the judge, man. But once the transcripts come out, everybody will be able to see the truth for themselves. You know, there are a lot of people that been following this case from a one angle perspective. And that's the narrative in which Alex Spiro and Megan's team was pushing out there to all the blogs like The Shade Room, Hollywood Unlock, etc., etc. Now, from what I've, I've been looking at both sides and logically, everything said that this was reasonable doubt. Like, if I'm going to paint the picture of what I think happened based on the coverage from these bloggers and reporters, I'm going to give you guys my story because I know there's going to be a play i mean there's going to be a screenplay written if it's not already written already there's going to be a movie coming out <laughs> you know there's going to be a movie coming out about this case sort of like the oj uh that oj versus the people um like docu series there's going to be something like this that come out cuz this like had the culture by the balls <laughs> Like this trial, people was fronting like they wasn't following it. But I seen I seen y'all in the comments. I seen y'all in the comments covering it. And then now y'all trying to act like, you know, you guys like knew Meg was right all along. You guys still wrong. The jury's got it wrong. And I'm going to tell you guys why. Uh, now, again, I got to preface this because, you know, I'm seeing Rock Nation, although I'm a small channel or whatnot. I'm seeing like. They're trying to take legal actions um, along these bloggers. So I'm going to say everything that I'm about to say, allegedly, and it's circumstantial evidence based on the coverage of these people's testimonies. Uh, so let me. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Hold on. Here's man. how to get. Hold on. Yo, man. It's a. Uh, it's wild. So let's get into it because I'm not going to try to be up here all, all long. I'm like watching DJ Academics live, Hassan Campbell's live, like trying to get a temperature of what's actually going on. OK, so this is my perspective. Um, everything's alleged, right? I have no proof to these claims. I'm just painting the picture. Actually, I'm going to frame it like this. This like if. You, a director or a writer, right? Clip this video and write the screenplay for this case. All right. What I'm about to say, I'm going to like <laughs> tell you what happened in a screenplay form. Okay. Now, here we go. <laughs> Again, this is based off of the coverage that I've seen from the bloggers reporters and I'm going to reference them like Malagro, Lawyers for Workers, uh, Megan, we're going to call her Megan the Reporter. That's what they were trending. They had her trending. So Megan with the H, the reporter. Uh, who else? Uh, Nancy Dillon, DJ Academics. All right. These are these are based on the coverage and based on the evidence that was reported by these reporters and bloggers okay so we're gonna go to i believe this occurred in J july 11th of 20 i mean july 12th of 2020 okay so here's what happened we're gonna say sometime in june okay megan the stallion gets a formal invite to a kickback at kylie jenner's house now if you don't know what a kickback is it's not a party and it's not a uh, it's not a party and it's not 
just guys like uh, get together. It's like a kickback. You get turned up or get turned down, right? It doesn't like if you you know I'm at the crib. I got some, you know what I mean? I got some cool music. I got a pool in the back. Come through if you want. That's what the kickback is. You're not obligated to come, but, you know, it's a fancier sort of kickback. So Kylie Jenner invites Megan Thee Stallion. Now, fast forward, Megan Thee Stallion hops in the car with her stylist because when she's not, you know what I mean? She's like in Hidden Hills or Beverly Hills or one of these like, you know, affluent neighborhoods. So she doesn't really need security. EJ is not a security guard, it's her stylist. So we're going to be flicking up. I need my hair right. We're going to be on Instagram. We're going to be with Kylie Jenner. So we're going to have to look right, right? So EJ, Kelsey hops in the car. They go to um, Kylie Jenner's house in the afternoon. Now we're going to speed up the story a little bit because we got to get to what, what happened. Um, they're drinking all day. Sun is beaming. They're like, uh, you know, sun is coming down. They're, they're having a good old time. You know, like, Tori's in LA. He's like looking to see what one of his, you know, 304s is doing. So he hits up Meg. And then Meg is like, yo, I'm at Kylie Jenner house. Like, pull up. Kylie sees that um, Meg is on the phone with uh, Tori, FaceTiming and all that. He's like, yo, invite him over. You know what I mean? We're having a good old time. Odell Beckham is here. We It's a kickback. He's live. Right? And then, reason being, Kylie wants to do a quarantine radio for 104 or 130 million Instagram followers, right? Now, Meg is like, yo, you are a little too pressed for me to get Tori here, but, you know, I'll do it because that's the homie. So, so Tori pulls up, but before Tori does, we got to frame Tori's mindset. Let me tell you Tori's mindset because I've been in this position before, you know? You get called by one of your 304s. You out all day. You a little musty. Now, you're not going to go straight there being all thirsty. And <laughs> you're not going to go there being all thirsty and go there smelling a little musty because you don't know, man, what's about to happen. I'm about to go. I've got two girls that I already piped down at this party. And I'm looking to pipe a third. I'm not going to go there and freshen up over there. Then they're going to say like, yo, what was he doing that he needs to freshen up right now? So he's like, yo, Quan, let's double back to the crib real quick. Let me freshen up. You know what I mean? Quick little shower. You know what I mean? Suds down the crack, whatever. And then he hops back in the Quan like, yo, book it. Tori's taking his time. He gets there around 9, 10, 10 o'clock, partying. At this time, Megan Thee Stallion's already turned. Kelsey passed out. This is according to T, um, EJ's testimony. E, uh, t uh, and EJ doesn't drink, so he has that clear memory. I don't drink either. And apparently neither does Odell Beckham Jr., Right? So EJ is sober. I'm that sober friend too. So like whenever I'm out with my homies, they could have a good time. They could like drink up and know that I got their back. I'm going to like protect them, make sure that they ain't got to like drive home. I'm driving. I'm usually the designated driver. Until this day, I'm still the designated driver because I don't drink. I don't need that liquid uh, cor uh, courage. I just already get, you know what I mean, turned up. Once I get into my charisma zone, I'm already turned, right? I don't really need the drink to, to be turned. So, anyway, back to the story. Uh, he puts Kelsey to, uh, to bed. Now, Tori is entertaining Megan and Kylie. And now... 
you know, Megan is trying to get all the attention, but Tori is like, yo, I already slid on you. I already slid on Kelsey. Like, yo, this is like a shot. I'm at, I'm at Kylie Jenner's house. Like, when am I ever going to be back here? <laughs> so I'm going to shoot my shot. And Tori was looking to shoot like over two defenders. <laughs> Tori is looking to shoot like down on the clock, like seconds on the clock, right? About to shoot over two defenders. About to shoot over Shaq and Kobe for the win, right? Shaq and Kobe being <laughs> Megan Thee Stallion and Kelsey. And it went in. Right? He told them, like, yo, Quan, take them to my crib and then I'll text you to come circle back and get me. They bit, they went for it. So he shot that and win and, and he win, right? So they hop in the car. Megan the Stallion is like, yo, who does Tory Lanez think he is trying to like backdoor me? And trying to slide on um, on Kylie Jenner. Who does he think he is? Right? So, there's still seconds on the clock. And <laughs> they have one desperation shot. And what that desperation shot was, that desperation shot from the, from the half court line was, yo, Quan, I forgot my slides. Let's go. Let's go back. I'm not leaving my slides. Now, if Megan Thee Stallion was a homie, right? A home girl. If you're a home girl and the play is with your homeboy, y'all not really messing. According to her, they wasn't really intimate. And if this was your homeboy and you know what he was trying to do with Kylie, you're not dumb. You know what he was trying to do with Kylie. You would have been like, yo, let me text Tori to bring my slides when he comes back home, right? When you come back home, don't forget my slides, right? That's one. Could have gave, could have gave him an assist. Like, yo, yo, let me know. Yo, I forgot my slides, but when you bring my slides, tell me how the night went with Kylie Jenner. But you didn't do that, Megan, because you're not the home girl. The homegirl would have been like, yo, I forgot my slides, but yo, like bring it to me and let me know what happens. I'm not going to tell uh, Kelsey about it. Just tell me what happened and then we good. I just want to know like, yo, your experience, it's a great story to tell, right? But you're not the homegirl. So you're like, yo, let me block this next shot. So I shot the from the half court and went in. Quan bites. Now, Quan is another one. Yo, Quan, this is another way that you could have did it, Megan, if you was the homegirl. So, Quan is like, yo, Megan. No, Megan could have been like, yo, Quan, I know you're going to go back and pick up Tori after you drop us, but don't forget my slides. Tell, like, you didn't even have to disturb Tori. You're going to be like, yo, Quan, don't forget my slides, all right? Just when you go to pick up Terry, uh, Tori, don't forget to pick up my slides, all right? Bet. Quan would have just dropped you off and it would have been dead. It would have been dead. It would have been a dub. And if you wasn't really, if you was really feeling some type of way, you could have been like, yo, Tori, I know what you pulled. That wasn't cool, man. I thought we were something, but now I guess we weren't. You just came and just jumped over Kylie. You know, colorism is sort of a thing too, by the way. Mm. Anyway, but you didn't. You shot that shot from the logo instead of giving an assist. You shot it from the half court logo. It went in. Quan bites and doubles back to um to the crib. Right. And when he gets back to the crib, you go in there acting extra belligerent, like yo, who stole my slides? Who stole my slides? Like somebody going to steal your slides in Kylie Jenner's house. Allegedly. <laughs> I can't find my slides. Whatever you did in there, 
it wasn't well received because Kylie was like, yo, I don't want no parts. Like, you guys overstayed your welcome. It's time to dip. Bye. Right? And you guys hop back in the car and start arguing about why you guys got kicked out of the crib. Now, according to the prosecution, this is where the story splits. All right? According to the prosecution, Megan started dissing Tori about his music. Tori is like, yo, get the F out of my car, man. Who do you think you are? Like, this is my car talking shit about me and my car. Get the fuck out. Megan gets out. Matter of fact, dance, bitch. Pop, 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 pop. Tori, I mean, Megan's limp. Now, Kelsey gets out of the car, goes to see Megan, and then Tori goes and like, yo, get back in the car. Like, we in the affluent neighborhood. Somebody must have heard these shots. Get back in. And, yo, don't say nothing, and i give you a million dollars. Now, this is what the alleged happened, right, from the prosecution. The defense is like, no, this is, the, this is more of a logical reason. So the defense is like, yo, no, that's not how it happened. So this is the eyes of the defense. They start talking, and Kelsey, who's already dating Tori, doesn't know about Megan and, and Tori, is like, yo, who do you think you are trying to backdoor me, right? And then using my friend Megan relationship to, like, creep on Kylie Jenner. Like, who do you think you are? Now, um... Tori, uh, Megan is like, yeah, who do you think you are? You think you lit because, you know what I mean? You got a, a song with Jack Harlow? You think you popping because you're in the top five with Jack Harlow? And he's like, yo, y'all crazy? Yo, Kelsey, like, yo, you don't know that me and Megan have been hooking up behind your back for the past several months? This is when Kelsey's face just gets torn like her heart just sinks and she's like yo you did this to me again and tori's like yo what do you mean again he's like yo the baby ben simmons this and that and then now they start fighting and everybody is fighting and kwan is just lining his business like me driving uber i'm hearing the most dumbest conversations in the back and he's like, yo, I can't wait to drop these motherfuckers home because, yo, man, I can't be dealing with this shit. One, Tori don't really pay me that much for me to be up all night dealing with this loud, black, drunk, ratchet shit. Megan gets out of the car and like, yo, I ain't dealing with y'all. I'm going to call something, call a cab, call an Uber, whatever to come pick me up. Quan, y'all just go whatever in and don't don't even come. Tori with the million dollar mouthpiece. There's something about short dudes with million dollar mouthpieces, man. Like they got game. I think it's sort of like the height thing. Same thing with ugly dudes too. Not all, but some. He found some way to talk to Megan and tell her, like, yo, come back into the crib, man. Like, yo, come back into the car. Come on, man. Like. No. So they get back into the car and Kelsey is pissed. Like, why did you bring her back into the car? Now they're, they're, they're like fighting like verbally and it escalates physically. Now, allegedly, Megan's in the front seat. Kelsey is in the uh, driver's side passenger and Tori is right behind Meg. She leaps and starts scrapping in the car. And Quan is like getting some blows too. So he pulls over like, yo, what are y'all doing? So as soon as he pulls over, Kelsey hops out of the, the uh, driver's side passenger, goes around the back to the front passenger, start pulling uh, Megan Thee Stallion out of the car. Quan gets out from the front, walks around. Start like stopping to break it up on the breakup. She comes and into the car, grabs the gun. Tori notices it before she could even up it. Pop, pop, pop. 
Pop, pop. Megan falls to the floor because, you know, you get a little. I remember like stepping on one of my son's toys and it made a big gash in the back of my leg. Right. And I could barely like I'm just like hobbling because that shit like it hurts, especially on the foot. So she hobbles up the driveway. You in an affluent neighborhood. Tori's like, yo, what the fuck? Like, what are y'all doing? We just, yo, let's go before the, the cops come. Quan picks up Megan, f- throws them on the back. Kelsey grabs, um, no, sorry. Tori grabs Kelsey, put them in the truck. They got a dip because, you know what I mean? White people be up early calling the cops, especially when they hear some foreign shit happening there. Beautiful. If birds ain't chirping and I'm hearing gunshots, that should be in Englewood or Compton. That's close to home. No, man. No. And the cops respond because, you know, there's no, no action in the suburbs. So you get a call about shots fired. You like, yo, this is my time to shine. So you pull up, you get up, and then this is where you can insert that video of them getting everybody to lay down, get handcuffed, and everybody split ways. Now, is this story true? <laughs> Who knows, right? But you could take the information gathered from those reporters and come to the conclusion that there was enough reasonable doubt in this case, based on the lack of DNA, gunshot residue on more, uh, more than one person, right? Un- inconclusive fingerprints on the gun. All of this, like contradictory stories, every witness contradicted the other witness. Tori is the only person that didn't get to go on the stand and either lie or tell the truth, right? We will never know. We know that Kelsey got up on the stand and lied. We know that Megan got up on the stand and lied. Like multiple different things lied on that stand. The only person that didn't lie yet was Tory or his um or his bodyguard, his driver. Like he's the only one that didn't get to testify and lie on the stand. But that's what ended up happening, man. Like, that's my recollection. So you could clip this, make it like clean it up, make it more compelling. You know what I'm saying? Sort of like the new Queen and Slim. Call it Tori and Meg, right? I don't know who would be playing Tori or who would be playing Meg the Stallion, but it would make for a great, a great screenplay. But all all jokes aside, man, like I I could have. You could have easily just, I guess it's just shocking. It's just shocking how this, this played out. And what happened was this was all circumstantial evidence, all circumstantial evidence. Let's um, pull up on academics and see what he's saying. Let's see what he's saying. Oh, his live is done. Let's see. Uh, let's see f- what fed it. I know fed it was on. California is so dangerous for like you know anything to do with you know um anything to do with a weapon period you mm-hmm. know what I mean mm-hmm. obviously the particular situation but you know uh th- their penalties and how they write their laws according to these things and how it's amplified when it's a you know man and woman issue is it's, it's uh, this 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 gotta be scary for a bunch of people you know what I mean and no I'm not saying always oh, scary for people who are abusing women um Again, if if we all seen a lot of data and a lot of in uh, you know things that came from court, and we said, oh, we believe that it's gonna go this way, and we're all wrong. I mean, we've ran polls, that we've we've had over a hundred thousand people vote. Yeah, yeah. And it was overwhelmingly ninety percent believe that it was gonna be a not guilty verdict. Yeah, and, and the average person it, can not even get the the lawyer that Tory got to fight this case. So the average guy is screwed. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is. Uh, also, go ahead. Yep, go ahead. I, yep. I'm also here sitting to think, 
you know, I thought even if he did, I thought he was going to get max, like found guilty of one, then not guilty on the other two. And I, I, I thought I would be able to say, oh, you know what? I think he messed up here. And if he didn't mess up here, he would have like beat everything. With this verdict, is like, where do, like, it just seems, I don't even know where to start to, to kind of decode what he could have done differently this and third. I know some woke motherfuckers will be like, well, he's going to, well, you could have started by not shooting her. I get it, right? Well, like, here's, here's the thing. Uh, so, and this is the discussion I was trying to have with Hassan, but he kept cutting me off. This investigation, this trial was a case of feels before reels. Because if you go through each of the prosecution's evidence, there's a reasonable expectation, and, or sorry, excuse me, there's a reasonable, um, there, there's plausible deniability that Tory might ha- might not be culpable, and I'll explain what I mean by this. So, mm-hmm. in the jail call and the text messages to Meg, right, he says, "I'm sorry," and he apologizes. And the, the, the prosecution heavily relied upon this. However, we know that th- on that night, Tory was flirting with Kylie Jenner. Tory didn't want to leave the house. Uh, Meg left the house and it came back for him. He uh, went ahead and exposed a secret to Kelsey that Kelsey had not known prior that Meg was running around and having sex with a bunch of dudes that Kelsey was involved in a relationship with. That led to a fist fight. That fist fight led to Meg getting shot. So there's a multitude of reasons that Tory could have apologized to Meg. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'm apologizing for the exact reason of me pulling the trigger and shooting you. There's a bunch of things there. Then they want to talk about the DNA. Well, we know that the DNA wasn't necessarily conclusive. And to take it a step further, both DNA experts testified that if Tori had shot the gun five times, more than likely his DNA would have been able to be found on the weapon conclusively. It was not. And then the other piece of evidence that they used was – what else, Ak, here? I'm going to look at my pictures. I know we took a, a thing here. What was the other piece of evidence that they had? Um, uh, oh, Sean, uh, the gunshot residue, it was on Tori and it was on Kelsey. So that adds two potential shooters. And then Sean Kelly, right? He testified that he saw Kelsey, a woman shoot, and he testified that a man shot as well. Well, I mean, what man are we talking about? Are we talking about Tori? Are we talking about the other guy? Like, that's just him saying, oh, yeah, I saw Tori shoot. But none of the other witnesses besides Meg can say Tori shot, right? And and from what they're saying, when he shot, was it shooting at Meg? Because Sean Kelly also testified that he saw Kelsey shoot the first shot. So, and his testimony was kind of all over the place as well. But what I'm trying to say is, is that each piece of evidence that the prosecution brought forward had some kind of doubt in it, that there was a hey. plausible deniability that Tory might have not been the one responsible. And my thing hey, is, if you're going to hey, bring hey, someone like on this. trial, it's got to be proven beyond a reasonable doubt. Put it like this. I'm floored because I thought, you know, it was going to be a combination of maybe many different things why they were going to, possibly vote for any guilty um, charge against uh, or any guilty verdict against Tory. What we now find out is that basically all 12 members of the jury yeah. believed Meg the Stallion's story despite it omitting a bunch of details despite um, her saying things that everybody else was like, no, that didn't happen. They believed her. Yeah. And yeah. again, that's scary. You know, um, it, it was Meg's the- testimony that got Tori convicted. And what scares me is that her testimony, number one, was shoddy at best. She was extremely intoxicated. She went at, she can't conclusively – what she says isn't proven through the evidence. And she omitted a bunch of important factors during it. For example, she did not admit that her and Kelsey fought. And she lied multiple times. Yeah. Was in, and also, also the court as well. It's you crazy. know, she gave conflicting accounts. So my thing is she should have never been a credible witness to begin with. And the fact that the jury actually believed her and convicted this man when there was a ton of reasonable doubt to prove that Kelsey could have also been a shooter is insane to me, man. <laughs> so... It is what it is. I mean, this is a scary moment for the criminal justice system in general where a drunk, intoxicated woman can get on the stand and that has lied before, by the way, as well, and given conflicting stories, can go ahead and be the reason that you are convicted of some very serious, egregious crimes. And not only is he going to go to prison, but now he's going to get deported as well if he doesn't, if he isn't able to beat this on appeal. And yo, Ak, as a yard man, how do you think Tory's father felt when he heard that verdict, bro? Oh, he screamed at court. Like his whole family was probably. I'm gonna be honest with you. I think they probably all went in today to say, "Hey, we're gonna get a a verdict maybe today, if not um, on Tuesday." But I believe they were all going in like, "Yo, hey, get the champagne bottles popping." Like, "Yo, get like." I think they were. Why everybody watching it? Granted, they're asking random people that's been at the court. Yeah, what are your thoughts out there, man? 
everybody said, yeah, not think what Tory's are your getting thoughts off. Out there? Everybody, I don't see no one who says, nah, I think I think Tory's fucked. No one said it. Mm. Look at Mo, Mo uh, Lawyers for Worker. He interviewed a bunch of different yeah. people. Hey, we yep. this thing. Everyone's like, I'm going to be honest with you. Even people who said, hey, I came into this bias for Meg, and I believe, no, Tory's going to beat this. So I got to imagine that the 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 shock um, from all these individuals, including, like, you know, everybody from Tory's team and even family, yeah, ridiculous. So going forward now, with this verdict no, that everyone knows about, you think Meg got a, a staple in the industry still? You think she's going to be popping or no? You know what? That's so interesting how this is going to play out because – Here's the thing. I feel like her her status in the game ain't changed, right? So, like, she's been getting awards. I know she said she's been going through it personally, but she's been getting awards and really all these accolades. There's certain male entertainers, which she has even said in her own testimony, like Drake, like the baby, right? People, and obviously she says blogs, like every blog just hates her, right? But she says these people have picked a side and I'm wondering if she's if how those relationships in the future will go mm. right like I'm, I'm wondering does Drake address this does Drake say anything about it does she ever do a song with Drake does she ever do a show with Drake um like I see two seeds say something about it saying kind of like it's fucked up he didn't really speak against Meg but like is there gonna be a divide I don't know Bro, you know, if, if 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 I'm an artist and I saw what happened to Tori and Meg, nigga, I'm staying far away from Meg, bro. A thousand with you, bro. I'm staying far away from Meg, hundred percent. Cause she can lie about him, nigga. What about me? She can say anything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it's just crazy because it's her. And then also, yeah. Sean Kelly, from what I understand, I'm talking with someone right now. They're telling me that he's the one that also said that the uh, he put the gun in Tori's hand. He said that Tori definitely had the gun on him, which you know that in yeah. itself is pretty incriminating. Yeah. Yeah, but but when he said that though, he said he saw his hand in the air, shooting wildly in the air. Yeah, that's why I thought if he was gonna get caught with anything, it would have been the um discharge, you know, the discharge of uh, the girl's yeah. negligence, right? Yeah, I was crazy. Um, all three counts. I did not expect that. And me and you talked about that. That it would, if anything, it would be the di- potentially the discharge or the possession of the firearm, but not the actual. You know what I mean? The other shit. So hopefully, good with the appeal. Saw it with a semi-automatic firearm. I was shocked. But I did say if he gets convicted of that, it's a 3-0. If you give him that, you got to give him the gross uh, um, the gross negligence, right? Um, you also got to give him – you're going to just assign uh, possession towards him because the gun was found beneath his feet. So you're going to basically say, fuck who's, whose gun it was in the beginning. Um, you already say he shot the gun. Um, he shot someone. Now he has it beneath his feet. You give him the last charge, so – Kind of Yo, man, out. that's Sean Kelly testimony. It's some very funny stuff happening, man. It's some very stuff, funny stuff with that Sean Kelly testimony. They need to look into that. Yeah, I mean, they, they put him in cut. They remanded him to custody, and he's not going to get a bond. So he's going to have to wait and sit in jail until January 27th. Damn, through the holidays, too. Yep. Yo, yep, right before way, Christmas. All right. No, all the rappers yeah. got to say, bro, that you're a news outlet because, bro, everyone's watching your, your channel for this update, bro. Everybody and their mama. So, yeah, yeah. yeah no, no, this was, you know, there's moments in time and in history that I remember feeling like everybody was watching me. I remember when Drake and Meek were going back and forth. I felt like everybody was watching me. I remember when 6ix9ine was on the stand. I felt like everyone was watching me. I think I had like 30,000 people watching me read tweets. All right. So that's um, the coverage from coming from fed it and dj academics they've been covering this extensively as well they're also taking the back from it like yo it's it's so much to process man and right before christmas i like i feel sorry for tory lane's son tory lane's his father his stepmom all the supporters like yo yo man Yo, this is a scary moment in history. Like, somebody who can lie up on the stand, somebody who has some evidence against them too that can plead the fifth and also re, uh, receive immunity from prosecution. Like, at some point in time, 
the prosecutors, they did not want justice. They just wanted to win, to echo the sentiments of um, Tory Lane's father. I don't know his name, but he is like, yo, the prosecutors did not l search for the truth. And the court, the prosecution is supposed to search for the truth. And uh, what ended up getting, I'm assuming, Tory Lane's convicted wasn't even the same storyline that the prosecutors brought forth. They brought forth the, the story that Tory Lanez just got mad, kicked Megan out, and then told her to dance and started shooting at her. That's the story that they brought forth. And as more people came up to the stand, there's so many contradictory stories, right? There was an altercation prior to that. Why was there an altercation prior to that? You get a little deeper in like the little past related to the case, the promiscuity of one Megan Thee Stallion. People say, why would you bring that up? Because it explains why it explains why there was an altercation between these two girls. Right. It explains motive. It explains so much more. It gives more color to the story that the prosecutors presented. And then, yeah, ended up Tory losing the game, man. Tory knocked out, hands behind his back, escorted. He was once hugging his son every day in the courtroom, holding him, walking out. But who known? Two weeks from the from the first day that you stepped in to two weeks. Now that that was his last moments with your boy, and. Yo, hold your head up, man. Like, I see the injustice. Like, it is not beyond me. I can see it. And I'm not looking for, like, I'm not saying it based off semantics. Like, I still can't wrap, you know, even, I still can't wrap around my head where the jury, because I served in three juries before, three trial cases before. And... I've had more evidence and still said not guilty based because it didn't complete the story, right? There's a story that you have to complete and this story was incomplete as well. And they still found him guilty. Like you, you got to, Like, you know how they, they got to explain the jurors have to come forward. The jurors have to explain to the people and I, I can guarantee you that what they're going to bring back is some circumstantial evidence. Like, how can you convict somebody based on circumstantial evidence, man? Like, it's he said, she said. Like, that should have handled that in-house. Rock Nation, y'all should have handled that in-house. But y'all brought that forward. Now, we can't trust anything that you put out. Anything that you guys put out can't be trusted at all. Y'all did Tory Lanez dirty. We all seen it. And we gonna keep echoing that because that is foul what y'all did to him, man. That is straight up foul. <laughs> Wicked. <laughs> Wicked, man. Jesus. Anyway, I'm not gonna stay long. I'm gonna see, uh, like... I'm going to see what's up. <laughs> I'm going to have this on the channel so that because I'm sure this isn't over. I know the appeals process is going to be very long, very arduous, probably going to have to sit behind the can or maybe even get deported because he's not a U.S. Um, citizen. So he might get deported back to Canada. But yo. We seen the injustice, man. They did you dirty. Like this was foul in all instances, man. But hold your head. Gonna continue to follow the developments of this case. All parties that are involved. Your Kathy Ta, your DA bot. Like y'all, y'all file for this, man. Anyway, <laughs> kids. Whoever is doing this for a, uh, a history assignment, if you're going to make a uh, screenplay, like clip this up and let me know how close to the story I, I am actually, all right? 
Anyway, don't forget to drink water, get money, mind your business. Peace.